Hey there Psychonauts! So today we're going to talk about the geometry of DMT hyperspace and I wanted to start by sharing my most recent impression of the DMT space. So this is how I described the space in my most recent visit. Hyperbolic, non-Euclidean, hyperdimensional, complex, evolving, intricate geometry. It's beautiful in a way only nature is. I can't even fathom it, yet here it is. It's more beauty than I deserve, more beauty than I can comprehend, and here it is. I have a front row seat. So this is just a taste of what the impression of DMT hyperspace can leave you with. It's definitely characterized by its astonishing beauty and intricate complexity. Um, but first let's go back to one of the things that I said that the DMT geometry was classified by, and that is being hyperbolic. So hyperbolic geometry is a type of non-Euclidean geometry, and I'll get more into what that means later, with negative curvature. So it kind of, it curves out from itself. And a way I like to describe hyperbolic geometry is that it's a more spacey space. If you looked at a hyperbolic surface, and I'm going to try to put a picture of an example of one, of like a crocheted hyperbolic surface. And if you look at it, you'll see that if you try to flatten it out, you wouldn't be able to. So in this way, it's kind of a more spacey space. It has this, you know, this negative curvature curving out. And I'm not completely sure if the DMT geometry is uniformly hyperbolic or not. I don't know if it's that simple, um, but the geometry most definitely has hyperbolic features. And I, I keep doing this because this is like one of the common elements that you might see. You might see shapes like this. Um, you see Alex Gray back there. I have Net of Bean over there. If you've seen Alex Gray work, there's these common um, hyperbolic shapes to them. Another prominent geometry that's found in the DMT space is something called the DMT torus. And I think I'll try to link a video representation of it because it's really cool and I think it's super accurate to what um, especially the beginning of the DMT hyperspace forming and what that looks like. And so basically, it's kind of like the view from an inside of a torus, which is basically a donut shape. Um, and from the inside, uh, it's a space, you know, like a hyperbolic space. It has that negative curvature. But it's a very specific geometry that is associated with the DMT experience. So we have hyperbolic geometry, we have the specific inside of a torus um, experience, and I mentioned the space is also distinctly non-Euclidean. So what does that even mean? So Euclidean space is based upon um, Euclid's elements. It's based on his five postulates, um, and the fifth one is called the parallel postulate. And this is where non-Euclidean spaces differ from Euclidean ones. In Euclidean space, if you're given a line and a point not on that line, there is only one line parallel to that given line that goes through that point, okay? That's more or less that fifth postulate summed up. And in non-Euclidean spaces, that is broken. So that is not the case. In the case of our hyperbolic space, if there's a given line and a point not on that line, there are actually infinitely many lines going through that point that are parallel to the given line. Um, so this also just demonstrates how this hyperbolic non-Euclidean space is a more spacey space. There's more room, there's more room for, um, it, it's, it's like, it's almost as if the DMT space takes on this nature because of the intense information content of the experience. Another thing that's really weird about non-Euclidean space is if you were to take a walk through non-Euclidean space, and this is very consistent with what happens during a DMT experience, um, the space does not operate in the way that your intuition may tell you. Uh, so if you start at a point and you take a left, you know, a particular unit length, and then another left, and then another left, and another one, you know, you walk to square and you end up in the same spot. But if you're in a non-Euclidean space and you do that same walk, you won't end up in the same spot. So the geometry is very different. The nature of the space itself is very different. There's also some really good videos that showcase people um, exploring non-Euclidean virtual reality. I'll maybe link one of my favorites down there too if you're interested in what a non-Euclidean space is like. And I definitely think 
the DMT space has non-Euclidean characteristics. The whole DMT experience is kind of this like unfolding process. Um, I feel like I'm constantly moving through the space and I'm like going through, I'll like go into like a different direction, a different room. And then like, it feels like your whole sense of perception is really like flipped on its head. You could like take a left into another room and like you end up almost in another dimension. The whole movement in the space is just very different from our three-dimensional reality. And speaking of dimensions, let's talk about why the DMT space is characterized by being hyperdimensional. So beyond just being hyperbolic, um, which in and of itself kind of adds dimension to the experience, uh, because like I said, that hyperbolic space, just think of it, it's a more spacey space. There's more to it. The experience I think is also multidimensional in more ways than just that. I think, so in my most recent experience, I remember observing the DMT space and it's just, it's so incredibly complex and intricate and I can't even believe I'm seeing it. Like I can't fathom it. It's absolutely astonishing and I'm looking at it, just observing it. And it's like, it, it constantly moves, it constantly rotates. Um, and I remember like asking, I'm asking how many dimensions? And I remember having this experience of seeing what I'm seeing and then like seeing more. I would see that I'd have something in my mind and then I'd just see extra. It was like I was seeing more dimensions of a particular geometry or a particular object. The mind is not limited by three dimensions. Um, it's really hard to describe and I've t I think I touched a little bit on this in a video I did a long time ago called uh, Psychedelics in Higher Dimensions or Can Psychedelics Give Us Access to Higher Dimensions? Um, thinking about higher dimensions in general is very, like, it's, it's hard on the brain, okay? Because your brain wants to bring you back into this like three-dimensional um, perception. So it's really hard to think about, but more or less, I describe this DMT experience as beyond just having this intricate complexity and more space within a space. So it's like there's more space than you would expect to be within the amount of space there is, if that makes any sense. It's also multi, it's also multi-dimensional. I don't know how many dimensions. I remember like thinking like, you know, can I put a number on it? Is there a finite amount of dimensions that we can say the DMT space has? Is it just four? Is it five? Is it 11? I don't know. Is it infinite? I'm not sure. But I do know that I experience hyperdimensional perception in a way that I just cannot in my normal waking reality. Um, yeah, so I'll describe it one more time. I see what I'm seeing. And then I just somehow, I see more simultaneously. That's probably the important part. It's like simultaneously. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but that's the best way I can describe the experience of perceiving things in a hyperdimensional way. Um, let's talk about fractals real quick because another thing that is characteristic of the DMT geometry is a fractal nature. And I think the most common connection with fractals that the GMT geometry has is that sort of infinite complexity. Um, I know probably most of you have seen uh, those like infinite zooms on fractals before. You can just zoom and zoom and zoom and it's just, you know, it keeps going forever. And that's kind of like the DMT experience. Like you can focus on a detail and then you can just zoom into it and it's just completely evolving complexity and it just keeps going. It keeps going. So I do think the DMT geometry has a similarity with fractals. I was trying to connect hyperbolic geometries and fractals and I did find something called Indra's Pearls and it is referencing Indra's net which I'm sure some of you also know about. Um, that net with like the pearls that each reflect each other and they reflect like the infinite and it's kind of like I don't know, I'm doing a bad job of explaining this right now, but there's definitely similarities with fractals and hyperbolic spaces. Um, I kind of want to describe this and I don't even know how accurate it is. It's almost like the DMT geometry is this hyperbolic space with fractal wallpaper. 
I don't know if that completely fits, but I think it may be something like that. In conclusion, I just want to emphasize how hard it is to hold this geometry in my mind. Um, having a recent impression of the space helps, but even then, the more I try to recall the memory, you know, the more my mind just is thinking on it and the less I have an accurate impression of what actually happened. So I'm so interested in finding out more about the DMT geometry, the mathematics of DMT hyperspace, the physics of DMT hyperspace, because there's some pretty paradoxical physics going on in DMT space. And I don't know, I also think that there's a lot of pattern to it. And if there's pattern, then I think information can be extracted and maybe we can learn more about something we can learn more about the experience we can learn more about our own consciousness maybe about reality i don't know but we can learn something so let me know if you have any questions and if you think this is accurate at all to what you've experienced in a dmt hyperspace or if you just found it interesting or useful i'd love to know what you think that is going to be all for this video and you all will see me in the next one